in this video we are going to learn about a concept which is known as functions and to understand that let's have a look on one use case so what if i wanted to have some formatting to be printed frequently between the results something like this so let's say i have a value 4 after which this formatting should print after that i have another value let's say a true after which this formatting should print and so on and so on i want this formatting to be printed after every result that i am printing so how i would have to go about that let's go to repel it and check that so i would be saying something like a console.log of 2 and i want to have some formatting after that let's say console.log of i'll just have a lot of pluses probably then i'll have a console.log of some dashes also some more pluses something like that we would like to have let's make it all equal and check how does it look okay so if i try to do this some multiple number of times let's say i have almost six or seven such values so i'll just copy and paste it multiple times so that we can understand this better let me change these values two three four five here we can make it six finally a uh, seven so how does the output look up till now let us try to have a look on the same so i would say node space functions.js and this is how my current thing looks after every single number i have this kind of a formatting i have this kind of a formatting but what are we able to observe over here now let's say if i want to make the change to the formatting of all of these lines i'll have to make it at all these seven places which is again some kind of a manual work but totally feasible to do what if we wanted to do 1000 number of times would we manually change all of these formattings from our side of course not right so this is one problem we need to consider here so this is what would happen if we try to print the formatting frequently in between the results now should i repeat these multiple lines in my file itself well that is one question we need to answer or are there any problems here so we just saw that we cannot be doing it almost 1000 number of times so what if i have to make these changes later then i'll also have to do it several times which again we addressed right in the code so this is how the demo looks like when we do it without a function again we just saw that in the code now how can functions make it better let's try to understand that so i can keep all my print statements which are my console.log statements in just a single place and then i can reuse them everywhere can i do that yes i can do that very well with the help of functions so any change to the message will also have to be made on that single place itself and at all the places where we are going to call this function it's going to work totally fine so in javascript whenever we divide up our code into reusable parts we simply call those blocks as functions okay so let's go and make some examples on the same as well so first of all let's also have a look on the syntaxes so we have a definition of a function looking something like this how do you create a function in javascript we have a keyword function space you give the name of the function then in round brackets you give parameters and you can also not give the parameters you have both the options and then in the set of curly brackets you write your functions body this is how you write your functions so according to the previous formatting use case that we discussed let us try to make an example on the basis of the same so moving back to repel it let me comment all of the code that we have written over here and let's make a new function let's say function print for matting this is what i'm going to name my function and then in my functions body i'm going to keep all the reusable parts of this code so in the above code what is the common part of this code that you can observe these three lines of code right these keep on coming after every result that i'm printing so let me copy them from here and paste it within my code i'll uncomment this and all the reusable parts if you remember the definition of the function the reusable parts can be kept at a single place and we can 
keep on reusing them. So I've kept the common part of this code in a function this time. And now how can I replicate the above scenario in lesser lines of code and lesser effort as well? Let us try to see that. So we were doing a console.log of two till seven, right? So let me just copy and paste these lines. I'll just make this three, four, five, six, seven. And after every single line, I would, instead of having those three lines, I would simply be calling this function. How do you call a function? Simply by having its name and then these round parentheses. So here's a quick thing that we have to understand about functions. This is the declaration of a function. I will write a comment over here, declaration of a function. And this is how you call a function. I would say calling a function. So whenever you want the function to be executed, it is mandatory to call that function. These three lines, which is a part of this function are only going to be executed when you call this function. So previously we were writing almost 29 lines of code to do this thing. Now we are almost coming down to, if you can count it, five lines here and then some 12 lines over here. So almost halfway down, we have cut the amount of code that we need to write. So whenever we have a piece of reusable code, functions is the best use case for it. And if you remember the problem that we were facing in the last use case, if this was going to be done 1000 times, we had to change it 1000 times manually. No more need of that because all of those can be changed right over here and it would be replicated on all the thousand times you're going to call this function. So this is how the declaration and calling of a function works. So by this syntax, you're going to call a function. Now, this time formatting use case with the help of function. So you can clearly see according to this example as well, the formatting moves into the function and it can be called after every single result that you're trying to print. You have to perform an activity on functions. So you have to write a function, my name, that prints your name to the console once. You have to call this function three times and see if the result changes. So pause this video now, you simply have to implement a function that prints your name and simply call the function three times. Pause the video now and we are going to see this very shortly. All right, so if you have solved it by now, that's pretty great. If you need some help, let's try to get this result. So if I try to solve it on repel it, this is how I would do it. I will make the declaration of my function. So for that, I would say function my name in which I would try to do a console.log of cryo.2. Now, if I want to execute this function, I have to call the function as well. So I would be calling this function three times as asked by the question. And we need to observe if the values are changing over here. So let's check that node space activity hyphen functions dot js and for all the three times the value gets printed as cryo dot two so obviously the values are not going to change the number of times you're going to call the function the number of times the output is also going to print we are going to talk about the types of functions available in javascript so in the below function we are not sending any input and that's why we call it as a non-parametric function. So have a look on this example. Function greet and in the body we are saying console.log of hi. So in such kind of functions, whenever I'm going to call this function by the name greet, it is always going to print a hi. In such kind of cases, you don't need to provide any inputs to the function. So that is the reason we simply call them as non-parametric function. So Whenever you don't pass any parameter to the round brackets, we simply call them as a non-parametric function simply because we have not provided any parameters to the function. Now imagine a banking system where they need to show different personalized messages for the users. So imagine you're going to a bank for opening a new saving bank account. So you must have observed once after you have completed the process, you receive some SMS on your mobile phone. Congratulations, comma, your name. You have successfully opened your saving bank account with XYZ Bank. So do you notice it is a personalized message right for you? 
whenever you're ordering any food from your favorite applications you must have been able to observe that they send you notifications personalized with your message so for all those kind of cases we can pass inputs to the functions which is why we simply call them as parametric functions so these are going to be dynamic and it will give different output for different inputs so we are going to consider examples for both of these categories non-parametric functions and parametric functions so let us first of all go back to repl.it and try to make some examples on the same so whenever we have function print formatting now over here you always want to have a fixed set of message to be printed console.log cryo.2 is the best place to learn and after this i want to have two dashed lines i want to have a dash here and finally the same dash just below it now if i try to call this function print for matting i would simply be getting my output as these fixed strings node space types of functions dot js and as you can see this simply prints it this way if i call this function multiple number of times the same number of times the output is going to appear so whenever we have fixed set of messages we simply are going to call them as non-parametric functions i'll write down a comment here non-parametric functions let us also talk about parametric functions then by commenting this example and let's make one own example this time let us say function print name and let's take in a parameter we are going to call it as name and let's try to have a message printed this time with name getting in consideration so if i say a console dot log of my name is and then i want to concatenate this with name parameter this time when i'm going to call this function print name during the call i have to pass some value for this parameter let me just pass it as rahul and let's check the output this time and as you can see this time the output comes out to be my name is rahul did you notice the difference between the last use case and this use case previously we were not passing any parameters parameters are a mechanism with the help of which you can give some inputs to the function over here in this case since it was a fixed message every time we did not need to pass any parameters in this case since we want to print personalized messages by passing different set of inputs you are going to simply use a parameter so name is a parameter which we try to declare during the declaration of a function i would give a comment over here as parameters and when you call the function the value that you need to pass for the parameter is simply going to be known as argument so we can clearly say rahul is the respective argument for the name parameter this is exactly how parametric functions work so if you can see the syntax of the parametric functions you can pass your parameters just like this in the round bracket and you can have your dynamic messages accordingly while calling the function you have to pass the respective values for those parameters so function name of tina in this case would simply print hi tina for the next case it would simply print hi arun right so what are parameters and what are arguments which is something that i've just explained you during the declaration whatever we declare is going to be known as parameters and when we call the function whatever values we pass for them are going to be known as their respective arguments so i can clearly again say that adieu is the respective argument for this param which is declared over here so this is the difference between parameters and arguments let us now also do another demo on the parametric functions so you have to write a simple parametric function to print a user specific welcome message to the console 
and you have to call the function with different usernames as arguments. So in the initial place, we had a use case of banking system which sends personalized messages, right? So let us try to make a parametric function on the same use case. So let's go back to Repelit. We can comment this one and I'm going to make a new parametric function. Let's call it print bank message. And I'm going to take name as a parameter. And let me say console.log of congratulations. You have successfully opened a saving bank account with XYZ bank. Now this is a fixed message, right? But what if I want to make it personalized according to each person's name? I can have name added after congratulations. Well, how would I do that? So for that, I would just end this over here. I would say plus name plus I would have the next set of string over here. And this is how you can see now whenever I'm going to pass a value for the name, it is simply going to print me a personalized message. Let's do that. Print bank message for Rahul and let me do it a few more times for different set of names. Let's call the other person as Raj, then probably Tina and then finally Arun. And let's execute it this time. And as you can see, congratulations Rahul, congratulations Raj, congratulations Tina and congratulations Arun. This is how you can print personalized message with the help of parametric functions concept. So this is how we could perform the same code demo. Now, can you pass multiple parameters to your function as well? Well, of course you can do that. So a function can also have multiple parameters separated by comma. So after the first parameter, if you need to pass a second one as well or a third one as well, you can simply separate them by commas. Okay. And you can also be printing different number of parameters in your functions body as well. So when calling the function, pass each of the arguments again separated by the commas so in this case bond goes to be first parameter voyage goes to be second parameter so in the same order you have to give the arguments as well so here's another demo that we can have with the multiple parameters we have to write a parametric function multiply it takes in two parameters x and y and prints the product of these two numbers on the console so let's again go back to Repelit and have a look on multiple parameters. It's going to be function multiply. It takes in two parameters and I can simply say console.log of x into y. And that's it. Let's try by calling this function multiply of 3 comma 5. Let me do it a few more times. We'll keep on changing these values. 5 six and probably sometimes here as well okay let's see the outputs and as you can see each time it is simply going to print the product of the two arguments that have passed three into five is 15 four into five is 20 five times five is 25 and six times six is 36 so this is how we can write multiple parameters in the same function as well we are going to talk about how do we return values from functions so we can pass values into a function with the help of arguments during we call the function we can also use a return statement in our functions declaration to send a value back out of a function so let us say we have a function known as multiply it takes in two parameters x and y and in the functions body we are saying return x into y now how does this make a difference with a console.log and a return statement so console.log is simply used to print something on the output but a return statement is actually bringing this value out of a function which we can store in a variable which can be further used at some later stage of our program so the return statement in a function has to be the last statement of the function after the return statement, any set of statements are simply ignored by JavaScript's execution.
So let answer equals multiply of 5 comma 2. Did you notice this time what is the difference? When we are calling the function, we are storing the result of it in an answer variable. So multiply of 5 comma 2 simply means 5 is going to be assigned to x, 2 is going to be assigned to y. Return x into y, which means return 5 into 2, which makes it a return 10. This value 10 is going to be returned from this function and it is going to be stored into the answer variable. So that is how we return values from functions. So let us also see the same with the help of a demo. So let us see we have a function multiply it takes in two parameters and we are saying return x into y right and let's say let answer equals multiply of 5 comma 2 and then let us also do a console.log of answer. All right. Let us now have a look on the result. Node space return values. Okay, let's run this again. Yeah, and as you can see, the answer comes out to be 10. Now, if I was going to write a console.log of hi after my return statement, what is going to happen? Is this line going to print or not? You can see it is not printing. So the return statement has to be the last statement of our functions declaration. If you're going to write anything after that, it is simply going to be ignored by JavaScript's execution. So this is how returning values from function works. And if there is no return value specified, then JS will always return undefined as a default return value in case of functions.